Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can use authentication state in place of WebAssembly application. In previous episode, I talked about how you can use authorized tag to show some part of your UI whenever a user is logged in, and how you could use not authorized tag to show some part of your UI whenever a user is logged out. You could also get users information by using at the rate context. Same thing I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it in code behind. One way is by injecting authentication state provider in your component and calling get authentication state async method to get users authentication state. Another way is by passing authentication state as cascading parameter to get users authentication state. So let's use both of these techniques to fix two issues in our application. One is whenever Julius Caesar logs in into the system, I see John Smith's profile information on the profile page. And whenever user logs out, user can still go to profile contacts and settings page. I want to protect these pages from user when user is logged out. Let's go ahead and fix these issues. Let's look at the problem again. I'm going to try and log in with Julius Caesar. I do get logged in as Julius Caesar, but I see John Smith's information. The reason why that is happening is because in my profile view model, I'm passing 10 as a hard coded value to get the profile of the user. And 10 is John Smith's user ID, and that's the reason why we see John Smith's information for all the users who are logging in into the system. So instead of passing 10 as parameter, we should pass user ID of the user who is logged in. For that, in my custom authentication state provider, whenever we are getting authentication state of the user from the server, I have added that user's user ID as one of the claims in my claims identity. And I've set it to names identifier. Now I'm going to need to access this user ID in my razor component so that I could pass it to my profile view model to get the correct profile. For that, I'm going to need to inject this authentication state provider in my profile component for that i'm going to go to my profile component and inject authentication state provider i'm going to name it as underscore authentication state provider now i can call this get authentication state async method to get the current state of the user for that i'm going to go to my on initialized async method and here I'm going to catch the authentication state in a local variable called as auth state and say authentication state provider we would like to get authentication state async. This is an async method. Let's await it. Now, if I want to get the current user, I could get it from auth.user. Let's grab that in a local variable so that it's easier to use. Now, if I want to check if the user is logged in or not, I could check it from its identity. I can say user identity dot is authenticated. That means user is logged in. Whenever this flag is true, that means user is logged in. And whenever that is false, that means user is logged out. I want to get the profile of the user only when user is logged in. So I'm going to cut this piece of code and add it here. Now I'm going to need the user ID of the user who is logged in to pass it to my profile view model to get the correct profile. For that, I'm going to get it from its claim. User has claims and I'm going to get it as claim. The claim is names identifier. I want to get that claim in my profile component so that I could pass it to my profile view model. To get it, I'm going to say user find first and the claim type is going to be C type is equal to claim types we're going to need to get a namespace to get this i'm going to add that namespace on top of the page here i'm going to say using system dot security dot claims now i could use this claims type and the claim type is name identifier and i can get that in a local variable, I can say var claim is equal to user find first, 
the name identifier so that we could get the user id of the user now let's pass that user id to profile view models user id property so that i could pass it to get the profile so i'm going to say profile view model user id is equal to claim dot value this is a string value and this is a long variable so i'm going to need to convert that into n64 let's also check if it's null or not nice so now we have the user id of the user we should pass this user id when we get the profile for that i'm gonna remove the stand and say this dot user id when we're getting the profile and this dot user id when we are updating the profile let's run this and see if that works or not I'm gonna log out from uh, Julius Caesar and I'm gonna log back in. I see Julius Caesar's information. I'm gonna update his about me section. This is about, about me and update that. I'm gonna log out, log back in with John Smith. I see John Smith's information. I'm gonna log out, log back in with Julius Caesar. I see Julius Caesar's information. So this is how you can use authentication state provider to get the correct user ID. I should say authenticated users user ID to get the profile of the user. One thing I want you to notice is I did not inject this in my view model. I could have, but I did not. The reason why, because this is a ASP.NET Core component authorization package. I don't want to mix my ui frameworks in my view model i want my view model to be clean so that i could use it across different ui frameworks like desktop application or mobile apps that's what we're going to do in the series but that's the reason why i did not inject it there in the next section i'm going to talk about how you can use cascading parameter instead of using authentication state provider You shouldn't typically use authentication state provider to get the information about your current user. You should use cascading parameter authentication state. The reason why I say that is because authentication state provider does not update the state when underlying state of the user has changed. You'll have to explicitly do that. The reason why it's working for us is because we are reloading our application every time we log in or log off the user. But that might not be the case for other applications. So we shouldn't use this. We should use cascading parameter instead. And the reason why we could use that is because in our app.razor component, we are wrapping a router around cascading authentication state. We added this when we enabled authentication for a client application. Let's go ahead and use that instead of injecting authentication state provider. I'm gonna go to my code and say that I would like to use a cascading parameter which is going to be of type authentication state. I'm gonna name it as authentication state. And now instead of using this authentication state provider, I can just replace this line with authentication state and everything else should work fine. So instead of getting authentication state async, I'm just assigning the cascading parameter to my local variable authentication state and then everything else should work just fine. I wanna also do one more thing here. Whenever user is logged out, I wanna log out. I wanna take the user to the login page. For that, I'm gonna inject navigation manager. Let's say inject navigation manager, which is going to be underscore navigation manager. Now I can use this service to navigate user the login page whenever user is logged out let's run this and see if this approach works or not i'm going to log in with julius caesar i get logged in with julius caesar i'm going to log out log in with john smith i get logged in as john smith i'm going to log out and try and access this profile page and you can see that I can't use it because I put this else condition. 
That's how you can use authentication state as cascading parameter. There is one more thing that I wanted to show you before I end this video. In my user table, I'm encrypting my passwords now. For that, I use this utility file in my project that I've added. And also whenever I'm trying to log in the user, I'm first encrypting my password and then checking against the database. That's all about authentication state. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. There's one more thing actually. In the next three episodes, I'm gonna talk about how you can log in with Facebook, Twitter, and Google. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you next one.